Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to my talk on async uh, and streaming JavaScript. Are we doing it wrong? Of course, the answer is always going to be yes, else why am I standing on stage here? And what, el what better picture than to show John McCarthy telling us we are exactly doing uh, programming wrong? So before I get started, I actually want to thank the organizers uh, very much because uh, of course, this is my first time speaking here, but I've been coming here uh, sin uh, since 2010. And without a, a, a conference such as this, uh, things like Node.js uh, Node on Windows might not have happened or might not have happened as quickly as it did. So it's with this very conference that really, really is, is amazing stuff to me. So uh, when I'm talking about uh, async or, or, uh, uh, async or, or uh, event-based program, I, think of myself, well, I thought I had a problem, so I know, I'll solve it with callbacks and events. Now, uh, have now problems to I, yeah, hmm, crap. Yeah, uh, concurrency bugs uh, have been bugging me since I've started doing JavaScript. And what this talk will not be is that it will not be a monad tutorial. There will be no mentions of category theory. Uh, it doesn't re require to, to know much about functional programming to really get started uh, to learning new abstractions for, uh, for asynchronous programming. So no, they're not like burritos, and no, they're not like any other silly metaphor that you can think of to describe monads. Uh, so, who am I? Uh, I am a software engineer and uh, self-described open sourcer. You can find me on, the, on Twitter and, uh, and GitHub pretty much using the same, uh, same tag. I'm fairly unoriginal that way. And I work for this, uh, this small startup out of uh, the uh, Seattle, Washington area. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they're called uh, Microsoft. And I like to think of myself as putting a little bit of metal back in Microsoft add um, umlauts to anything, automatically turns it into metal. So I work on a, uh, a project called the Reactive Extensions, and I've been working on this uh, since 2010. The idea behind the Reactive Extensions is really to, uh, to, to create a nice uh, program, programming language agnostic way of dealing with asynchronous programming. And yes, I, Matthew Podwasaki, am an RX pusher. Now, really what I want to, to get through first is that I want some, some quotes that will help us in our learnings today. The first one is, to be conscious that you are ignorant is a great uh, step towards knowledge. The next one is, ignorance never settles a question. And the third one is, the best way to be acquainted with a subject is to write a book about it. Or in my case, get up here and give a talk about it. Uh, and this was uh, given by the, uh, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, the UK back in the uh, 19th century. So let's just face it, asynchronous programming as we know it today is annoying. Because by themselves, you have e every library and every certain thing doing its own thing, whether it's callbacks and promise promises uh, doing one thing where it's yielding a single value versus events where they're uh, dealing with multiple values. So each concept is covering its own little piece of the story, not the whole piece. So just to kind of give you an example here, uh, you certainly wouldn't uh, call a promise on, a, uh, on an event that you expect from more than one of, just as you wouldn't, do, uh, you wouldn't normally need a uh, collection to describe a single value. But even more than that, how about if I want to make a web request and then com uh, combine that with uh, getting the key, uh, the key press events so that I can send my data over to that, and then we need to make sure that we're not overloading the server. How do we think about that when we're just talking about promises, callbacks, uh, timers, etc.? How do we deal with that? Is there a better way that we can think about uh, asynchronous and event-based programming? Well, we had a very forward-thinking uh, president in the United States who, uh, in uh, the early 60s, uh, came to this very city and said, Ich bin ein Berliner. But what he also said is we choose to solve asynchronous pro uh, programming and do other things, not because they are easy, 
but because they are hard. Citation needed, damn it, Wikipedia. So callback hell is very much a real thing. So when you're dealing with callback hell, you've, you've got uh, nested function after nested function where you're trying to accomplish something linearly. So for example, here, I might want to, uh, to play a movie. What that, uh, what that entails is making sure that the player is initialized, uh, that I'm authorized to do so, and then when I'm, uh, then when I'm do done, it authorizes me with a movie ticket. <laughs> and what you end up with is a cow's head. All your co code, all it looks like is just a cow's head at that point. Somewhere the logic gets lost, and it's evil. So I don't know about you, but whenever I write code like that, this usually happens. <laughs> and it's, it's not easy to, to recover from, those, uh, from getting burned like that. And just as well, event-based programming is just as annoying. Say, for example, we want to create a drag event, a custom kind of uh, event that we, we do on our own. So what we would need for that is we would need to say whether the mouse is down or not and have some state as to where, where the mouse is. Then in the mouse down, we would have to say, okay, mouse is down, here's, here's where we started. Mouse move, we go, okay, mouse is down, let's do some calculations. And on the mouse up, we say, everything's done, we're good to go. And then we have to, of course, not only add the event listeners, but we also have to remove them as well. And that gets pretty darn annoying. And so when you're dealing with that much state, once again, you're juggling and you just can't hold it, especially when you're, tr when you're just trying to, to, to do something else, add something new to your program, that's what you end up with. So let's talk a little bit about the asynchronous programming landscape, as it were. So we have, well, the programming landscape in general. We'll have two axes, one to describe synchronous and one to describe asynchronous behavior. And one, one part to say whether it's a single value and one to say that it's multiple. So for example, when you're dealing with a value, that's what you get. You call a, a function or you assign it a, a value, that's a value, good. An iterable, is a collection. So in JavaScript, we have uh, arrays, we have maps, sets, uh, arguments, anything that's iterable here. And then we can apply higher order operations such as map, filter, and for each on them. But what about asynchronous single values? Of course, we have callbacks, but we also have promises. Now, promises are very interesting in the fact that now instead of this callback function, what you have is you have a first-class object that you can pass around to people that describes what that value eventually will be. And that's not something you can necessarily do with a callback. I can't hand you a callback and say, no, this, this represents a value. It doesn't work that way. And then what I'll put in the fourth quadrant and final quadrant is observable. Now, observable, as you will see, is asynchronous in its, in its very nature. So you can take the same stock, uh, stock data, you can filter it, you can map it, and you can for each it. No code changed at all in terms of what you're coding on the client. None, none whatsoever. And that's very, very intentional about what, we're, uh, what we've done with a, the observable design. So if you know how to program uh, against uh, collections, then you know how to program obser against observables. What I like to say a lot of the times is that your mouse is also a database. So it's a database of coordinates that you will get eventually when the mouse moves. Therefore, it should be as queryable as an iterable sequence is. So the thing that I like about these abstractions is that they're first class. And then what it means by first class is the fact that I can pass uh, one of these objects, whether it's an observable, uh, or, it's, uh, or it's a promise to a, to a function, and I can also return it from a function. And so what that gives us is it gives us a lot of uh, flexibility when it comes to, uh, uh, to querying something or for testing, for mocking, whatever else it is. It's really nice for, uh, for us to do that. 
Now, promises I'm sure you've heard a lot about uh, here already. I've seen it mentioned in a good number of talks already. Now, promises are, are great because they're pretty much in every single library that, uh, that are out there nowadays. And they have pretty much the same behavior outside of jQuery. Uh, what you have is you have very uniform behavior, so you can think about them all pretty much the same. Handlers uh, done asynchronously, and once it's done, it's done. You're good. Everyone gets the same answer. So we can take the previous uh, thing that we talked about, the, the callback hell, and, uh, and distill it down to the player initialize, authorizing the movie or, or handling the login error, playing the movie or saying you're unauthorized. Boom. No more any of these trying to finish and de detecting whether this state is available or not. But there's some problems I have, at least, when, uh, when it comes to promises. Promises don't solve everything. So for example, cancellation is not a part of the contract for promises in ES6. Why? Well, there are a good number of reasons. It's because you want most people to fall into the happy path and be pretty productive. But it's very much the case when you deal with a lot of things such as, uh, uh, such as dealing with I.O. where cancellation is a normal part of what you do. And what about situations like an autocomplete where you just don't care about the value that comes back? So in this particular case here, I'm like, uh, how do I cancel that again? I don't, I don't, I'm not really interested in this anymore. I don't know. Uh, so do I create a cancellation promise and I subclass the regular promise? Do I pass in a cancellation token? Uh, do I, uh, or do I just use a library like Last from Dominic Denicola? Any of those are, are perfectly valid, valid options. Now when I, I talk about reactive programming, uh, so reactive programming is, is a very kind of fuzzy definition, just like functional programming is. Everyone says, well, functional programming, application of functions, not helpful. Uh, so what we're trying to do is trying to figure out what exactly we could call reactive programming. So uh, the dictionary says readily responds to a stimulus. I'm like, well, isn't that just normal programming? Uh, what else is interesting about it? Well, reacting to events is certainly one thing that, uh, that reactive applications do. But they also re react to load, so the fact is that you can spin up more instances to, to handle uh, data, you can de uh, determine whether you need to drop data and so forth. Uh, you can react to failure, so at a, if at any point that you need to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to handle some errors and, and return it from cache, you can certainly do that. But to me, most, uh, most importantly, is reacting to, uh, to your user. The last thing you want to do is have your, uh, your JavaScript page uh, be unresponsive to a particular user. And what I'd like to say is, is, is you know, uh, the reactive extension stuff that I've done has played a little bit of the role, but you know, there, there are a lot of, there's a lot of hype, obviously, around there with Gartner and so forth in reactive programming. But when I'm talking about reactive programming here, I'm just talking about observables. So why don't we actually take the, uh, the previous example of that mouse, uh, mouse drag and kind of turn it in, inside out and turn it into an observable uh, solution. What would it look like? Well, if we had this first class object of the mouse down, we can take that and, combine and uh, start to do a calculation. Uh, so flat map will basically, it will take a sequence and it will flatten it into, uh, into a single value or a single stream of values, rather. And then we can calculate the offset of where we started for every mouse down. Now we can start to take the mouse moves by once again using functional programming, things that we already know with using arrays and the array extras. We can say, take the mouse move, which is also another first class object, map it, so we can decide to give the left and the top, so the, t the total differential between the two, okay? Pretty good. So the problem is we'll be going down like this and then forever it'll keep on going because it never responds to, to the mouse up. Well, we can fix that by saying take until mouse up. So mouse up, once again, a first class object. We can say whenever this fires, stop the sequence. We're done. And it even holds a little bit more pro uh, promise, uh, suffice it to say, uh, when you're dealing with promises. 
So what if we want to take some, uh, some input, for, uh, as it were, take the input's value, and then we're going to, to, uh, to call, uh, make a dic an, uh, uh, an autocomplete scenario here. So what we want to do is we don't want to overload the server uh, because uh, our bandwidth is time and money, quite honestly. So what do we need to do to, uh, to fix that? Well, we have uh, things such as throttle. Throttle or debounce, as most people know it, where, where you can type, 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 st stop for half a second, and then suddenly it'll fire. Excellent. So if when we're thinking about observables, we're thinking about, once again, back to that axis there, we have the observable and uh, we have the observable and we have the notion of asynchronous or time-based. Then we can get the value, make sure it's distinct so it hasn't changed. And then what we can do is we can uh, call uh, a service, which might be a promise, only getting the last one. So the, one of the biggest problems with asynchronous programming is, is what? Is that you are uh, dealing with, um, with the fact that you could get uh, out of order responses, and this fixes that. So, and then you bind that to the UI and you're good to go. And even more complex things, and I'm not going to even bother explaining all of this, but even more complex things such as pulling for row updates, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty complicated, but Rx handles it just fine. What we need to know is everything's a stream. Good. It's a very zen-like moment. You're like, yes, I got this. This is not to be confused with FRP. So FRP is a, is a notion of continuous time. Behaviors are, are objects with a continuous piece of uh, time uh, uh, and a continuous value, whereas events are different. Events only have values when they fire. And most of those, uh, what it is not, it is not just any old library that has map filter and reduce on observables, and so most FRP libraries aren't. So what about generators? So I'm sure that a lot of people have seen what generators can do. And so yield suspends the function and resumes when you actually uh, get the value back. Uh, and a number of libraries already support this. Well, the library that I work on does it as well, as well as uh, Q, Co, and a number of those things. So once again, you can say retry three times here, and you still get the benefit of observables, but yet you get a very linear uh, imperative style. CSP, eh, I'm okay on. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, but a lot of people uh, seem to love uh, core.async. Uh, and uh, they, th they seem to think that it's uh, a good win. Like I said, I'm not all that amused by it because uh, it makes error handling very manual, it makes uh, resource management very uh, manual. Not a fan. Uh, async await also is, uh, is uh, very worthwhile in terms of uh, discovering what's new uh, in, in JavaScript. So, what we have is we have async await, which is, has been approved for ES7 at least the first stage. So what we can do is we can now take some, uh, some animations and we can start to await each one as it comes through. That's pretty powerful. So it makes it explicit that we're dealing with an asynchronous function. So we don't have to deal with this function star and yield stuff. It makes it very, very uh, obvious. Now let's quickly talk about stream processing. Now when you're in Node, I don't know how many people de dealt with streams one, but let's face it, they were awful. Uh, the pause didn't, data just started immediately, you can't consume a number of bytes, you, everything just got shoved at you, and pause and resume were just impossible. You know, it was basically this. So then we catch streams two, which landed in, uh, in 0 0.9 and then eventually in the stable uh, 0 0.10, and then supported object mode uh, now and everything was good. Uh, then we also got readable, writable classes and so forth, duplex and pass-throughs. And then uh, streams 33 and a third, whenever they decide to, uh, to land in, uh, in uh, tw V0.12. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure that'll, uh, that'll solve everything, too. But cork, uncork, 
pretty cool stuff in terms of being able to, uh, to deal with uh, uh, mass data rights. But still, to me, I, I, it's too complicated. So uh, the WhatWig or w, what WG uh, streams, uh, what they're trying to do is trying to standardize a lot of this for the low-level APIs for what, uh, what's going into, uh, into the browsers. Uh, so Dominic, uh, who is here, he, uh, he is working in that. And right now, it's currently focused on low-level uh, I.O. And it's unicast in nature, meaning only one, one person reads, one person writes, et cetera. It's interesting, but could we, could we take and generalize what he's trying to do, what we're trying to do here, into a more general uh, kind of thing where we're talking about like observables? And the answer is yes, and the, and the, uh, the answer, unfortunately, is Dart. Um, Dart is doing those kinds of things where asynchronous programming uh, they do with futures and streams automatically. Uh, so futures, great. Uh, streams uh, unify I.O. and events together. So literally, uh, your open read and your, uh, your on-click, same thing. You can use the same API throughout all of them. Now, reactive streams is, a, uh, is an effort that's going on because a lot of people in the observable world say, well, you can't do back pressure. Can you? I mean, because, come on, you, you deal with, uh, with a lot of people handling uh, uh, your data. We can't possibly, uh, we can't possibly ha know how to deal with this. You know, a, a Node and others have it very easy where you have one, one coming in, one going out, that if you cr kind of crimp the hose, that's fine, no, no big deal. But when you're dealing with a multicast uh, situation, it kind of is a big deal. So with observables, we actually do have notions of back pressure. They could be lossy. For example, I could be possible sampling them, throttling them, whatever. Uh, they can be lossless, so I can buffer them. Possible buffered, so pause and resume, or controlled. So for example, here, I can take my chatty observable, possible buffer it, uh, then pause and resume, and I, anything that happened in between those pause and resumes, I still get. And just as well, we're building it into the very core part, so each subscription will then be able to say, I want to request n number of items. So once again, back pressure is something that we have uh, definitely uh, under our belt. Now, where do we go from here? I think there's actually a lot of places that we can go because, because of the fact that async and await, all these other things are kind of pushing the envelope. Uh, and that's a really cool thing. But what if we could go even further? So in ES7, uh, Jafar Hussein, who is a member of the TC39 uh, ECMAScript Standardization Committee, has proposed uh, async, uh, uh, async generators in which we could take that very same mouse drag and put it into the uh, uh, for on kind of s syntax. So you could say let mouse down on element.mouse downs, which is once again that first class object. Uh, document.mouse moves, once again, first class object, taught, take until document.mouse ups, yield the mouse move. Good. So that to me is very, very interesting. And I think there are a lot of places that we can go with, uh, with these kinds of approaches. So. I will be upstairs if anyone has any questions or if anyone wants an RX sticker, come find me. I want to thank you very much for your time.